Okay, welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. A great pleasure. Let me get the counter going. Okay. Uh, and uh, a great pleasure. Welcome to the program, Anthony or Tony um, Gronovich. Gronovich. Gronovich, a very good name. PhD, professor at CUNY, a historian, and he's also a, uh, a, a writer of a book that we want to let him talk to called Last. Western Empire, a history of the United States from its spring to its fall, which may be in keeping with the fall season we're in now with what's going on downtown. And Tony, so welcome very, very much to Congress. Thank you very much, Harold. I always appreciate talking to you and being on your show. Well, I appreciate your being here on this time. It's really amazing. We might just set the scene. This is the day that, much to my chagrin, and so forth, I'll just mention, we'll get away from it, that uh, apparently the forces of what I would see is retrograde imperialistically back to CIA, DIA back forces just in Libya. Just call them NATO's rebels. Level NATO's rebels. Uh, <laughs> managed to kill the person of Muammar Gaddafi, who I have a right. different look, uh, take on and so forth. But that's the day. So this is the uh, the 20th of uh, October, 2011. And so that said, share with us a little bit your own background. You're a historian. That's right. An intellectual historian, among others, but you're, and also political. Yeah. Well, I did a book on New York City's politics um, as a political sociologist called mm -hmm. Race and Class Politics in New York City Before the Civil War, uh -huh. in which I showed how the Democratic Party had integrated the working class of the antebellum pre-Civil War era. But it was a white working class. There were no women in the party. There were no blacks in the party. Uh -huh. But it was more representative. And by the time we get to the 1880s, which wasn't covered in the book, I dealt with the period from the founding of the city, 1626 to 1863, the draft uh -huh. riots. Uh -huh. Um, by the time we get to the 1880s, the workers are not in politics anymore. They're in unions, and the unions are supporting particular parties. So are the unions getting strong then? Were they really? I had a grandfather who was in uh, lithography. He was in a guild. Right. But the unions, like when we think of AFL, CIO, and that sort of thing, was obviously in the future. Well, the unions the were getting union... stronger. Okay. They were getting stronger. Right. The okay. AFL, of course, was growing at that time. The what? The American Federation of Labor comes into existence in the 1880s. We had the Did Knights really? of Labor oh, before that. that. Okay. Okay. And, yeah, the, the, the unions were organizing, and okay. they were organizing, unfortunately, outside of politics, except within the Socialist Party. When Debs, who became the head of the Socialist Party, went to prison in the uh, 1890s in the Pullman strike, yeah. I Pullman, believe 1894, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, he became a socialist. Mm -hmm. And then he ran in the Socialist Party, and, and he even ran from prison in 1920, because uh -huh. he was jailed for making a speech against the First World War. Okay, that, that, that's really interesting. We were talking as we were getting coffee coming over here, and I asked you about the Know Nothing Party, and you were very familiar with that. Right. Because I think there's a broad in the world, a huge, very disquieting anti-intellectualism at play on a lot of things that are going on now. But the party, the Know Nothing Party, that was when the 1850s or something? Yeah, 1850, 1854. That was apparently a long... Uh, it was very big in Massachusetts. Okay. And it was the Protestant workers who were protesting against Irish immigration. Okay. And, and they were anti-Catholic because uh, they were Protestant. Right, yeah. But when asked if yeah. they know anything about this conspiracy, this anti-Catholic conspiracy, they said, well, we know nothing about it. Uh-huh. So that's, that's how, how the, the... But I asked you also... And you, but that Know Nothing Party became one of the main components of the new Republican Party, which formed in 1854. That's interesting uh, corollary with the Tea Party and the Republican Party. Currently, I would suggest possibly, okay, uh, which sort of betrays my political bias. But uh, so, and, and they actually had elections where that was the name of the party that was on yes, the ballot? Yes, in Massachusetts. It was called the Know Nothing Party. The Know Nothing and Party. And they used that name? Yes. Okay, that's very, very interesting. But it was you. very short-lived. They didn't it call became, it the Tea Party. No, it became, it became integrated into the Republican Party, along with the the Liberty Party, which had become at that point the Free Soil Party, and the big rump of the Whig Party, which was opposed to slavery. And uh -huh. the new Republican Party became the first dominant party in U.S. history to be opposed to the extension of slavery. So when Lincoln... Which, when, which party? The new Republican Party of 1854. Okay, okay. The first uh -huh. election was 1856. Uh -huh. They didn't win, but in 1860 they won because Lincoln got a minority of the popular vote, but the majority of the electoral vote, and he, he assumed the presidency. And that was around the slavery issue. And that, that was we around the extension of, of slavery. That's right. Correct. That was a major issue at that right. time. And this guy here on the cover is yeah, the winner, is Alexander Hamilton. Yes. Huh? And he was not 
a racist. I uh -huh. read everything he wrote when I set up a Hamilton Institute at Passaic County Community College Good in New Jersey in the 1980s. Good for you, and yeah. And there was nothing in favor of Hamilton back then. Uh -huh. But Hamilton was looking ahead okay. because I see American history under the current capitalist system mm -hmm. as a play in three acts. The okay. first act, agriculture, created jobs. The second act, industry created jobs. Mm -hmm. Now the titanic struggle between the industrial capitalists and the plantation owners was the stuff of which the Civil War was made because the industrial capitalists wanted to make all labor wage earners. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to have slaves, they wanted to have w wage slavery. And now, okay, in the last generation, yeah. uh -huh. the third phase is, is computerization, which we just entered into it in the 1980s and 90s. Mm -hmm. But because of computerization, we are losing jobs that are being outsourced and, down, and the industries are downsizing and outsourcing jobs. So that uh -huh. this is a situation where there are a lot of people without jobs who have gotten educations, who have these huge student loans, which are more in some cases than the mortgage on a house. Mm -hmm. And finally, it happened on September 17th down on Wall Street. The youth with no future, the people who sympathize, because I went down Friday morning uh -huh. to save the occupation Wall Street because there was a threatened evacuation mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, the richest yeah. mayor in the history of the world, yeah, right. Michael uh -huh. Bloomberg, uh -huh. who's a spokesperson for real estate interests. Yeah, real estate in big in the city, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we, I went down there and... Good the, for you. And there was a call, I answered a call from the AFL-CIO, said, come down, head down there, get there early, Good. show your numbers. Uh -huh. And because labor, organized labor was there, uh -huh. the police put it off. That yeah, was the real reason. Uh -huh. Now, uh -huh. as opposed to the 1960s, the students were organized against the war, a lot of them because of the draft, mm -hmm. uh, but the workers and students were split. But this time around, students and workers are united mm -hmm. because the unions have greatly lost membership and the conditions for, of work in this country have declined markedly in the last 30 years yeah. because of this outsourcing and downsizing. Right. So it reached a critical point mm -hmm. that was attained last month and so this occupation, everything has mm. spread to the U.S. and has spread to the world because everybody is fed up that the 1%, which is not a responsible, certainly not morally responsible, I mean, Citibank just paid $255 million fine mm -hmm. for ripping off investors prior to the 2008 bailout. And in 2010, Goldman Sachs paid a 300 some odd, $300, 000, $300 million fine. Uh -huh. There was no jail term for these guys. They deserved mm -hmm. jail because they knew what they were doing when they ripped off con consumers and caused so much misery for the American people. Well, that's a take that a lot of people have, and it's bride spread around this country. I think there's a lot of support for the fellows down at, uh, you the know. The majority, all the polls. Of the Bloomberg world, yeah. took Bloomberg News, Time, Quin Quinnipiac, they all took polls. The majority of the population supports the occupation movement. I wonder if I could just uh, try to get it. That's a national, it's a city and a national purview, but it's also in a world context. It's happening in the world. That's correct. And there are things going on in the world that are uh, echoing that kind of thing. You went through that very quickly, and it's very interesting, the three-part thing and everything, and there was an industrial... It's a play in three acts. Yeah, well, I would say maybe... And politically back. symbolized, I might add, if I may make a small joke. Sure, by all By sense. the election to California a few elections back of a guy who played a murderous robot. Yeah. <laughs> the computerization, yes. Yeah, what was that guy? The Terminator, right? The Terminator, yeah. yeah. yeah sure. The Terminator. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they also brought in, you know, Prop 13. and That's in the American <coughs> history. In that, But it's also within a context of the world. It's also within a context of the planet. Right. And I wonder, I like what you're saying. I would say, uh, I would rather go to the history of mankind. We're here 200,000 years. It took us until 8,000 years ago to get civilization because we made a Neolithic revolution that was a major revolution that made empire possible like you laid out with Egypt but Mesopotamia China Mesoamerica and also the Andes right. and they, anyway they had that and yet it was big I agree. and then you had Rome and it went to Rome and that sort of thing and then Rome fell and for about a thousand years it was the dynastic states of 
Europe uh, were referring to, there were other things going on. But the point being is there is in the minds of those who are called the leaders, the political leaders, the geopolitical leaders, is largely based throughout all of history, it seems to me. I bet it would have been the same in the Cro-Magnon cave days, seeing human nature in a certain way, by those who have the best weapons. Those who have the geopolitical ability, the British could rule over Indy because they had the Gatling gun and they could control by military power. Well, they power. also recruited the Brahmins to Oxford and Cambridge. Yeah, that, and they right. Used them that's right. And they were co opted and all of that. Cast. Yeah, but yes. the thing is, then you get out of that. A thousand years after Rome, we had a feudal order based on dynastic states, and that was assumed to be historically legitimate source of authority for the operation of a society. And, we and still that, have that. And that was based on agriculture, you would say. Then we had in 17. 76, a revolution made, uh, you had the uh, wealth of nations, the Scottish Enlightenment, the mm -hmm. Enlightenment was coming, mm -hmm. the invention of the steam engine heralding a model for the heralding of the Industrial now Revolution. Remember what John Bolton said, what? steam power made England a world power. That's true, and they went out and, and, and took it... Uh, they did that, but what it was doing is the zeitgeist or the involvement of the whole world society, even within an ecological context, was tr being transformed since we came out of the game. We were contained in Australopithecine four million years ago. We didn't exist. We came into being. There are changes through time on large patterns. They call it punctuated equilibrium when the new appears, and we've had that. And then, as you said, they had a, a, a revolution that was made in the United States of America in 1776, uh, with the founding fathers and so forth, and they set a pattern. But he was the only visionary. He was the one that looked ahead to industrialization. So he was all ahead. the other guys were plantation owners and slave owners. Right, and that and was they based, looked to the past. That's right. They were looking to the past, and now the system. They wanted that he, to create an agricultural republic. Okay, that's right. That's right. And he and, and Jefferson too. I mean, oh, he, Jefferson, he had, Madison, yeah, Monroe. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, right. So we set up a pattern that was there. We have a constitution that's read with religious. Uh, adoration by many people by saying we have a pattern and the assumption that we have is that we have a pattern that's in place much like the herald the her the dynastic states had a pattern of legitimate that we are legitimately historically we have the pattern that's for the world and that's the system that we have and yet the system that we have the way it's evolved and developed is not at all adequate to the uh, to, the, to what the future either newly allows now in a liberating way or requires if we, can avoid, if we are to avoid just realpolitik notions of how power is to be decided and when you've got weapons that are mass, uh, are species lethal in their, in, their, in their capability and the technological capability all latent because we don't have a system relevant to the future. We're reifying outdated institutions, and that's a major problem that's being challenged down there at Wall Street, I would suggest. Absolutely. A big change, not a little change in the chessboard, or not a little thing of reading history in the traditional way, but a massive change that has to be taken in, 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 a, in, a, in a higher level of consideration. It seems to me this is now the defining generation of 10,000 generations that's what Isaac Asimov said. This is the defining generation. We either are going to annihilate, clinging to the past, led by the United States of America, or we're going to uh, liberate humanity and the ecology in a way that will serve in a new order, almost on the verge, uh, analogous to punctuated well, equilibrium. Well, it's a new paradigm. Yeah. No, use pa no, paradigm's too small. Paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm. You, you're coming to a situation... Well, I'm looking, thinking of Thomas Kuhn's structure of scientific revolution. Of course you are. That's the term that he came up with. Right. A paradigm is done for systems thinking, but it's not only... What I'm trying to get at, it's not just one thing. It's not just energy. It's not just this country, that country. No. It's a paradigm. A, para a paradigm. It's punctuated equilibrium. Oh, okay. And we don't have the vision of how we're going to allow the system to go about when you do not need the people for their labor participation in production and all of the capital assets and resources are allowed to be owned by a tiny plutocratic class in every country in the world and the international order is accumulating ever more so under the terms by which things are drifting in historical terms and we don't have a system or a pattern that is relevant to the needs of having a system that is relevant to empowering the people in a way perhaps with the use of uh, 
distributing demand as Keynes. That's why talk. I put him on the cover because okay, he good. won because think, he founded the national okay, so bank. Because he's he, the money man. Okay, the other guys he, were the landmen. Did he find found a country and then uh, a, a system? that was able to have a pattern that serves us well now. If we just get back to his roots, we're okay. No. We don't need to challenge the no. American paradigm. No. That's what I'm trying no, to get No, I at. have him there because he won. You like, he, he won. won. Okay, That's why he it's the won. last Western Now, Empire. we just killed Gaddafi. <laughs> Gaddafi had a pattern that might have been more familiar or relevant to the new future coming out of an earlier condition, as they thought we were bumpkins in the Europe when we were saying we were going to set a new pattern. He was perhaps ahead of it. We do not have a pattern that's adequate to what the future requires. The United States of America and those who have signed on to our reading of things, including Mr. Hamilton. But we that's do what know. I'm getting we at. We do know that Or the do next, we know or do we no, have a pattern that's relevant? We know that people live and people die. That's true. And we Lord know Cain it's said. a general, generational. And we know that this generation, all the demographers, whether can, have said that the next generation or this generation will be poorer than its parents. And if we stick the first to time. Well, yeah. we, 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 This is very clear what's happening. Mm. In the last two years, you saw this, maybe you saw the lead column in the Sunday Times. I didn't, two, but okay. two, two Sundays ago. Uh -huh. The last two years, the, the average American household's income has declined 10%, and that's precipitous. And that's when the recession was allegedly, mythically, according to the media, over the okay. first two years from 2008 to 2000, uh, 2007 to 2009 was when the recession was on, when the collapse occurred in 2000, September of 2008. And yet from two th until June of 2000, uh, this year, 2011, We've seen a 10% decline the last two years. Well, that would be true, and the, it, but it's been building up over a long period of time. In fact, if you look, you're a historian, it's always been, hasn't it, Tony, always been a small elite who ran everything. <coughs> well, here, Emperors certainly. in Rome, the right. kings in, you know, right, right. it's always elite. But it's always, so, it's, it's, a, it's often a dynastic elite. Well, it that was. if it's smart, it intermarries. Yeah. So the Rockefellers intermarried with the Winthrops, you try to to, the Aldriches, okay. to get to get the cachet that comes with the Mayflower mm -hmm. to create Winthrop Aldrich, yeah. who helped create the Federal Reserve System, which the libertarian right and the left want to see abolished. Uh -huh. Because we have, unlike India, which 75% of the banks are publicly owned, mm -hmm. unlike China, where 100% uh -huh. of the banks are publicly mm. owned, in this country, Virtually 0% of the banks are publicly owned. Mm -hmm. And basically, the piracy of the banks is ultimately responsible for the collapse that is spiraling out of control. They've I mean, taken the money and ran away with it and left the American people in the dust. Uh -huh. And that's why left and right have come together in this occupation Wall Street, well, I don't which know. is not ideologically defined. Oh, oh, you're right. It's very vague. And it's probably good to be vague and in a while. It's just a general reading of the angst and the, uh, the, the realization it ain't working. We it's need something working. new. It's broken. Right? It's that's what broke. I'm looking for, something new that can that's be inclusive. And that's what we're trying to help to uh, get to and so forth. But it seems to me that uh, that's a, a challenge of these times and so forth. I went back. I, I skipped over a thing quick. Uh, the means by which the Medicis were interested in, in, in Leonardo da Vinci was not so much that he could paint or create good... It was because he could create a siege machine that gave them political advantage. Well, I used it's da Vinci. Still, I used da Vinci as one of the beginnings of No, but the, of the relationship book. between power yeah. yes, and, the, and the intellectuals is what I'm getting at. And <clears> the <throat> way that the po power comes out of the end of a gun... Well, da Vinci is my not, favorite... Is that still true? He's my favorite historical figure, is okay. da Vinci. Uh -huh. Because yeah, he's he, marvelous. He, yeah. he, he, so you're an intellectual. His art yeah. was science. His science was art. Yeah, but Medici liked him, who was the power of oh, They liked him because, because he, he made a siege tanks. machine. Tanks. They gave them... And that's why that's Bill what I'm getting at. That's why Bill Gates bought the Codex for $35 million right. from Armand Hammond back yeah. in 1980. I did a program with Armand Hammond. He was the head of Occidental <coughs> Petroleum. Right. Who had a That's what gave Al Gore's family the money, Occidental well, Petroleum. These are details, right? No, but they're the the pat no, but, but the it's pattern. The oil it's the oligarchy. The oligarchy. Well, at the moment, but yes. that's a pattern. That's I mean, I mean, that's not a pattern. It's a detail of history. Yeah, James Joyce had Daedalus say he was a great historian. Actually, history is a nightmare. 
from well, which I'm attempting to awaken. So there's details well, of that's that. Well, And it's always it's been, okay, you think there's been a just system? <laughs> but I like choice. Do you think there's been an adjust system? Especially because Or also that the technology, ability of the homo sapien uniquely is to be able to extend their consciousness into the environment through technology and tools and make the environment other than in an Eden-like sense is the way most all of the creatures encounter it. Do you understand what I'm of saying? Of course. So that's unique. We've now reached a point where that's come to an existential significant new pattern, particularly through the fact that geopolitics and realpolitics understands that you uh, have extension of your power and that that's what gives you legitimacy is your power, your military power. But there's also safety in numbers. There are more poor people on this planet than ever before, and, and the, the disparity in wealth is, is greater growing. than it's ever been right. in the history of humanity. And the disparity of, of wealth in this country is larger than 1889, well, 1789. The disparity of wealth in this country no, is worse greater than, the, than any industrial country. Okay, oh, no, or, or it's worse, there are things, uh, the, the disparity is worse than it was in 1789 France, and that was pretty grim. It's always been grim for the people, and there have been people who tried to make changes and so forth, and then and while this is all going on, on, the system is moving ahead in terms of its technology, and I threw out a little line. I wonder if it rings true to you or not. Uh, you're a more or less, we're contemporary more or less. Do you think it's possible, as we all felt in about 19, well, even in 62 with the Cuban Missile Crisis and that, but uh, particularly around that time in 1970, that the weapon systems that had evolved out of our intelligence, special theory of relativity, Teller, you know, all of that, that they've gotten to a point where outside, not only just thinking nuclear winter or something, but that we have weapon systems now that have emerged that we were not possessed of as recently as the Second World War when I was alive, that are species lethal. Of course. That they, no, no, of course. Is I'm that, involved. I'm involved okay. with shutdownindianpointnow.net. I'd be against that. I'll, 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 I'll fight now. against you. Shutdownindianpointnow.net because we want to shut down Indian Point. Well, that's not, happens that's not there, answering the question. But Indian is, Point has nothing to do with it weapons. It has to do with nuclear power. It doesn't power. have anything to do with weapons. Yes, weapons. It, they could, those nuclear power plants are giving no, sea, uh, no carbon out or anything. They could be good. And you could be taking the weapon, the plutonium in the warheads of the weapons that are dangerous and feel Feeding the, I'm against you on that idea. I think atomic energy has a great future and should have. No, I'm and a it, green. Remember, okay. I'm a green, Harold. Okay, I ran a, for assembly in 96, mayor in That doesn't matter whether you're a green or not. But the does. question we is, are opposed do they, absolutely to nuclear okay, energy they, that's, in any that's, form. That's a no-nothing no stance, and that's okay. You take no, it. It's, it's okay. We can talk. We can, well, we to can my way of thinking, well, it is. Okay, it's okay. We disagree. That's good. we disagree But the point we agree on, or do we? At an intellectual level, yes. are the weapons, do they remain species lethal? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Except for the cockroaches. Well, the, no, I'm not talking. They've I'm talking survived about, 250 million with years. With all due respect, I don't think we have the ability to wipe out the life process that began 3.8 billion years ago. We haven't gotten to that, but we can wipe out our species. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Couldn't do it. I yeah, couldn't no, agree oh, with you agree. more on that point. Is that not an existential new reality? Sure, it's been okay, around now, since the 40s because Einstein said it very well. No. He said the next war will be fought with stones. That's Einstein said that, but that's assuming <laughs> there, if there were species lethal. I'm not talking about history. Yes. You're talking about reality that's changing at the level of capability. There's a capability for good. There's a capability for bad. Okay, contained in this. It's, it's a double-edged sword, as is much of the way the world's set up. But that's an existential new reality that is part of the context in which we understand what's going on. And uh, if they, that, that they, they got that way, most of the modeling, I'd appreciate to share modeling on you. That's a question that should be in the minds of people. Uh, it's around 1970 that they became species lethal. Woodstock in 1970 wasn't just sex, drugs, and rock and roll, let's have a party, or Woodstock, or Malcolm, or any of those kind of racial things, or voting rights, or all those kind of things we associated with. There was something existentially 
significant going on. The computer thing began with Turing. It didn't begin in the 80s. It began with Turing. It began with the early Babbage machines. Babbage machines. There was a growth thing in terms of being able to utilize technology for information uh, uh, manipulation. Sure, I'm, it's I'm a long pattern. Okay, IBM. it reached a certain point in turn, and that collective capability reached a point where if you could get a measurement of uh, haves and have-nots at the level of capability without all the details. The details get in the way, but uh, haves and have-nots of the world population, ecologically considered, and the trend of that through time, coming out of history, 10,000 generations, back to Isaac Asimov, say this generation is the defining generation in terms of the evolutionary process, not the political process, the evolutionary process, that we were transcending at the level of capability material scarcity as an ontologic reality. Can you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but the I averse say side of the destruction. I would say the current generation is, because there's a job, there is no jobs in the future, and the well, that's getting down to things we could talk about, economic theory and so forth, that informs the political process, no? Yeah. Okay, that's good. But we there was a about that, that. The 60s was more, more of a cultural revolution. Well, that's what you're... I'm saying, I'm trying to say that's too small thinking. That right. there were things going on being mirrored from the existential reality of the overall zeitgeist, if you can understand what I'm saying. Sure. It wasn't just cultural. It wasn't just, you know, the, the event of the moment that kind of thing. It was a thing that's signaling, and it's now being well, manifest. Well, it was a rejection of consumerism. Well, that's a detail that's of the overall detail. pattern. What I'm trying to say is this is, a, so you agree readily, I wonder how many would, and what's the backing for it, that the weapons that now exist, we are no longer protected in our impotency about massive species-wide suicide. And it is contained within the weapons of the United States of America, which is now re re claiming to have a pattern for all of the world in an empire. That's the last Western empire, I presume. That's right. That is relative. They're dropping predators on people all over the world. They're projecting power all over the world with an idea that includes Mr. Hamilton and all the rest of it is holy writ that is not adequate to what the future requires. We need something new and we don't have it. The major threat is something that would existentially, it wouldn't be, radic it wouldn't be re rational, Barbara Tuckman kind of thing, uh, start the second, it would be irrational that will lead to the unleashing, the full-fledged unleashing of the weapons of the world. Do you think that's something that might be in the, in the offing if we don't come up with something existentially significant and largely conceived Look, and conclusive in this period that the kids to downtown are helping to set off? There's nothing to guarantee that the human species will survive. 99.9% of all species that have ever existed have gone extinct. And the mentality of some of the people in Washington and London, with all the bases that the U.S. has, the U.S. has more bases and than the, the rest of the world together. Oh yeah, by the far. The rest of the world together, and they're directing it at Russia and China because Russia freed itself from the control of Anglo-Saxon capital in the First World War, and China did the same in the Second World War. And the right. two of them are allied. Now, well, the big mistake for the Anglo-Saxons mm. was the Germans, because back in 1900, as we were discussing before the program began, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's get Neville book, Chamberlain's yeah. father wanted to work out an alliance with the Germans. He said, I want the Anglo-Saxon race and the Teutonic race to get together. The Germans said, no, we think the, Ger the British are on the decline and we're on the up and up as mm -hmm. an empire. Mm -hmm. And they never went along. And because of that, we had the First World War and again, the Second World War, also to destroy communism, but the Russian communists were a little smarter than, uh, and, and beat them at their own game. Well, they were going on a Marxist ideology. They had a Marxist, it was Marx who did it. And China also, in China now, uh, the, the, their religion and the new guy coming in yeah, is the, a scholar of, of dialectical but materialism. Let me, let me, He's a Marxist. Let me, They're running that country as though they were Marxists but let who me, are working for the but, poor okay. people of the world. But Harold, let me just make it very succinctly. It doesn't make... State power transcends ideology and religion. So in the final analysis, if it's Vladimir the Great founding the Kievan state, or Vladimir Lenin waging the revolution, hmm. or Vladimir Putin, that's something that the short-sighted take the money and run and, and pass it on to your family inheritance 
social register crowd in this country didn't understand. They were frightened of Soviet communism right. to the point where they sponsored Islamic fundamentalism and gave money to Osama, gave money to the Saudis. Well, they gave to money to Osama to get the Russians out. It, the that's grand, right. It was, that's it, was, right. it was George Kennedy. So now, so now, if the grand, if as to use Brzezinski's metaphor, the, mm, the grand chess board, yeah, right. They don't have the pieces. Well, that's the grand game. They, they don't have the pieces because they have to deal with a situation like they had prior to the First World War. They have to deal with Russia. They have to deal with China. They have to deal with the economic might of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and Iran together. Uh huh. And they also have to deal with Islamic fundamentalism who want them to get the hell out of their land and their territory because they're only there for the oil. Uh -huh. and, and also to establish the basis right. because ultimately I think you may be right. There's nothing to guarantee that we won't have a third world war. Well, without by vision, these people, people <clears throat> perish. And we do not have vision. The kids downtown are touching into something that's got a national thing around the world. There's something needed that is not on your television sets or on your talking heads That's or correct. in your newspapers or That's anywhere. Correct. There's a thing going on a beyond. A sense of community, very well, much like all the right, 60s. that would be part of it. That's part of it. I think it would be good it's to communalistic. get... communalistic. That's what I was trying to get back to. I don't think this 1970 period is something to be brushed over. No, there I'm not things, brushing it over, but no, it's premature. Well, No, not premature in a certain sense, because what you're talking about really is that there is a there is a reality. We reify history to a very real degree. We drive into the future with our eye fixed firmly on the rearview mirror. We reify the outdated institutions that have been holding for a long time to give identity to people and all these kind of questions, these kind of questions. We do that, but there's something new required. You've got to be able to relate to the future. We don't have that. And the pattern that we have does not offer that, and you have to get down to it in a certain sense. The politics are all informed by economics. I would think you might agree on that or not. They used to call it political economy in yes, Europe. Yes, so let me just say one thing. So we get down Ronald to the Reagan, Ronald Reagan used to sit on a director's stool mm -hmm. and say every night at 9 p.m. on 20 General Mule Electric Team Theater. 20 Mule Team Borax. See, we're old enough to <laughs> no, remember no, that. No, no, General Electric oh, Theater. Oh, oh, oh uh, I remember was, General. He was peddling yeah. light bulbs mm -hmm. back there. I can remember. And he'd always end by saying, progress is our most important prog oh, right. product. All right. And yeah. what is absolutely essential to the spirit of or the myth of the United States is this notion of progress. Well, and that has ground to August, a screeching halt in the new so? millennium. Absolutely. Uh, there was somebody, August Comp, who was a who, who had that belief in progress something. Right, or the I'm idea of progress. About, or the idea well, that that's the progressive movement. Yeah, progressive The progressive movement, yeah. movement was the socially responsible members of the upper class who said Henry Look, George fits into that, do you think? He sort of fits into he it. He had a lot of support turn of the nineteenth, right, twentieth right. century. He had a lot he wanted the resource to be owned massively or collectively. But the progressives who were reforming urban politics, yeah. but it was from an upper class perspective. Yeah. But at least there was some sense of civic responsibility. But, and about the only person who can appeal somewhat to that class today was Ralph Nader, is Ralph Nader, and, but, but the rich don't care. They're just taking the money and running, and they've abandoned the society. They've abandoned the 99% that 1% has abandoned. Okay. There's never been a greater economic inequality in this country since the year before the Great Depression, Right, right, and we have another, there's a Ravi Batra's thing about a depression it might be holding true. They may get into a Great Depression, which is very, wor the thing that's overwhelmingly worrying is that this, uh, and Mr. You know, Bush and, and uh, September 9, 2008, Paulson comes in with the three-page thing, con bangs, bends down, got to sign it, got to have it on the president's desk by the end of the week or the whole world's going to fall apart right. into a massive depression, which we don't want. Right? They had to bail out capitalism as Roosevelt did. Well, they, they had could to take, bail it They out. could nationalize the banks. <laughs> well, they, they wouldn't have. The only, there are only two states in this union that are in the black. Montana, because of its minerals, mm. and North Dakota, they have a state bank that they've had around since 1918. Well, okay. And everybody else was looted by the city banks, the Chase banks, the Bank of America. They took the money. It's, they said at the time, and it can be said today, it's socialization of loss, privatization of profit. Yeah, yeah, the There's kind no of thing, responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. You can have uh, anybody running the system, and it's 
that was George Bush Jr., okay? Well, yeah, George Bush, and then Obama picked up on it. And what do you think about that claim? I'd like to get into the thing about economics, and so because yes. I think economics is crucial. Of course. But uh, what do you think about the claim by, it would be held by Mr. Obama and so forth coming in, her, inherited, had to stave off what would have become? We said it trippingly. I also want to get back to that idea about we may have transcended scarcity along about 1970 by modeling it at existential order. A giant, giant transformation in the reality of capability and the distinction between capability and the reality and the institutions that inherit out of history, if you understand. But they said they had to do that, and you said, of course, but they had to do that or there would have been a spiraling down and a Fine. great massive beyond 1929 depression of the whole economic order had to be avoided. If I ask for a bailout, I have to pay a lot of interest. They didn't have to pay any interest. In other words, the banks asked for a bailout from the American people. They, they didn't have... ask for it. The government came and realized it. Geithner and all those people, Sumner well, and all Geithner those people. Geithner told. And, and all of but the they economic... were responsible were for they the crisis. Right? That they, they had No, to, they were responsible we for the crisis because they followed Ayn Rand. Well, Greenspan filed, followed Ayn Rand. If you remember, back in 1987, was, yeah. Paul Volcker was in the minority, mm -hmm. a three to two vote of the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. What they did was... Get rid of Glass Siegel. Formally, they got rid of it in they 99. They had gotten rid of that. Clinton when did they get rid of it? 99. It was Clinton. 99. Yeah. Clinton who yeah. got yeah. rid of it. Right. And did. that set the stage yeah. for a repetition because these people don't know there any history. They're only interested in the money was and it, they're good actors. The, yeah. And they, and they smile well, for, you're going for into other a, people's misery. I can as understand. Clinton you're does. going into a politically attack uh, toward certain people within the way that society set but up. But they rather, were in charge no, when it happened. They were in charge. But you're, you're going that way rather than the pattern, trying to stick to the pattern. Was it correct that that kind of thing of, of shoring up the banks and giving all that money had to be forced on J.P. Morgan. They didn't even want it and that kind of stuff. It had to be forced in order. AIG, they let Lehman go. But they had to do those things they had to do, which were so leading to... So where's the to penalty? Go, because no, those guys knew what they were doing no, when they made those loans. There you go loans. back into your but political... They, no, no, excuse me. Was they it, knew what they were doing when they made those loans. That's why Citibank was fined this week $300 million, because they knew well, by the SEC. And that's why Goldman Sachs was fined last year, or 2009. But the point, the point being, if I may, Tony, the point being is were the things that were done by this administration and the things that Geithner, Sumner, and these people, and all the, and Paulson coming in with that thing, was that, and they convinced the Congress, it got done, they did it. This is September. how they convinced the Congress. This is how the Congress was convinced, because you have to remember what Mark Twain said in well, 1900. Well, you're going political again. The only Native American criminal class is the U.S. Congress. Mark oh. Twain. Uh, Mark Twain was brilliant. Absolutely. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. But the question I have, and maybe I should just try to get off of it because you're very political, Lee oriented, and that's okay. I am too and everything. But the thing is, did that have to be shored up if only to get to where we are now, where we're maybe getting to where we're going to actually get to the right answers that we didn't have then what in the terms right of the zeitgeist? They've won. They've won. They've, they've looted the country. Mm. People are starving. Yeah, but People are on the streets. People are homeless. A third of the Bronx is on food stamps. Mm -hmm. Is this is this is a way to run a nation? It's a disgrace. It's oh. a moral disgrace. Now it's not it's a criminal disgrace. Okay, with all due respect, let's say whose fault is it? Let's get to that. Then the one percent. They knew what, what they were doing. Don't they okay, knew what they were doing? I wish you could get off your thing about being political. It's but not I'm saying It's it is, larger than political. I'm saying it's, it's the one percent. Okay, you want to have an enemy to they, do? No, they have not an enemy. That's the enemy of Wall Street. We are the ninety-nine percent. <laughs> well, okay, you were taking a political. I'm trying to see it in larger terms <coughs> All right, if we can, you know, terms. and why? Why did this happen? You got notions of human nature. Two things I suggest to you can be modeled, and there's a great deal of it for it. Two, two events taking place, uh, not in the newspaper or not on the news or anything like that. One was the weapons finally, after 200,000 years of human evolution, 13, uh, 4.5 billion years of evolution on this planet reached the point where they were able to destroy the entire human species, an existential event going on almost unnoticed but very much unconsciously taken in by the population. The other side... 100% agreement on that. Okay, equally significant perhaps, never mentioned, 
at that level of capability. It's not the Democrats are here and the Republicans are there and this is it and this is called Monty, all the, the Democrats and, and Republicans. No, yeah, what, yeah, there you're going political. It's okay, it's okay. But I mean, I'm just saying it's, it's a show limited. Game. It's limited. Yes, I understand. And they're at fault and we're good and that all kind of thing. But anyway, the thing is, on the equally significant on the other side of that destructive scenario, characteristic of this moment, mm -hmm. which is destroy the whole species, is an incredible reading of the capability of seeing human society within an ecological context, the percentage of the world population, not the nation, not one city, the world population, because of the technological ability to provide life support to the people in terms of new materials and things that were growing constantly on that capability side, that we reached a point where the percentages of the world 10% First World War, 20% third, Second World War, maybe 30% something, uh, I reached the point of 50% in terms of the modeling of the world society within the understanding of the whole system around 1970. We were transcending material scarcity. Can you get that? Sure. Or does it, well, then why if we were transcending, why are so many people Does it poor? make sense to you that that may be capable, that may be the reality, existential reality on the well, living side? Way. It's a problem of distribution. Why no, are there so no, many poor oh, people? No, there you're going into a detail. Why are there well, so many I'm poor people? I'm not asking for the detail. It's not a That's detail. That's what it is. Can you understand it or can it be understood and anywhere and said anywhere that that was something, that modeling, there's a great deal of it, was as equally existentially significant as the destructive scenario, and it's never mentioned. We have transcended scarcity at the level of capability. That's part of the making of an operating manual for Spaceship Earth that has an understanding of a new dimension of capability at the level of capability. Can you... Well, can maybe you, at the potential level, yeah, but, the, but yeah. in the actuality, there are more people poor well, the than actual, ever before. The actuality is you're reifying outdated institutions. They only let Galileo off the hook 12 years ago, the Catholic Church, for saying we weren't the center of the universe. No nothing parties, ignorance, that kind of thing. Sure. But the point is, intellectuals can grasp that in thinking, and that that's a reality that we can relate to if we're trying to get to something existentially significant, yeah, but you have not to in eat, political terms, in evolutionary you terms. Have can to, you understand what yeah, I'm you saying. have to eat before you can think. Okay, I know that's part of the thinking. You I, that's have all to I'm, eat before you can think. But I didn't think. ask you to go into those details. Well, of that's that. a big detail. I, I didn't ask you to go into it. I asked you on the weaponry <laughs> side, you went for it right away. Yes. Now, when I asked you, we may have transcended scarcity at our level of capability. Okay, that's what I'm talking potential about. Potential capability. Yes. No, it's potential. a crap. Yes. Well, the destruction's cap potential. Yes. The, the liberation. So I agree. Are, are we at a point, humanity? Because it's in the hands of 1%. No, you there have you to go back political. You have to redistribute the assets. Oh, no. You have to have a different economics in order to... Uh, if you well, have enough... You have to have a different politics. You have to have a different everything. Well, that's If what you've transcended... It's all been about material resources and who's got the ability to go steal the grain from somebody else, make their tribe strong, realpolitik, the great chessboard, all of that, that there's a new reality that is there. And the intellectual's job is the intellectuals to deal with that at an intellectual level, not a political bias level that is reifying outdated how do, you, how do you influence people? Well, I, first of all, you bring it up. It's mentioned once in a while that there is this, that's the world, that's the realm of the intellectuals. And they're falling down on the job. They're all fighting each other over, over turf of political thinking and so forth. They're the bad guys, we're the good guys, we're going to, or no, that, that's a... The good guys are at Occupation Wall Street. Okay, I... <laughs> I Support them. I've been there five times. Isn't it? Is I just did a thing with Judith Molina. God bless her and, and, and all the artists and you know, the, the James Joyce. Yeah, lovely, yeah, lovely, lovely. And she said it's in the. It's going to. It's just going to be a massive thing. It's happening. Let's hope. Right. Let's hope that it doesn't and die. It started in or Tunis. Or allowed to die. Yeah, it's very, very encouraging and everything like that. So it comes down to economics. So you said that you mentioned it kind of quickly and all that. But it was outsourcing, that's part of it. I don't see how the bankers, you have to see, you'd have to have something that could be not only a win in a political sense to beat the bad guys, mm -hmm. like a war or something. You'd have to have an intellectual thing, an understanding that would come from, a, from an understanding of things intellectual. It's an intellectual thing that would be so comprehensively appropriate involving politics and everything else to the reality that could be able to be liberating of the people 
and a massive scale, ta tap the potential of what is there. It's potential, it's not real, okay? You have to deal with history, but also be able to end ecology, and the ecology, and that's all part of the context of really nanotechnology is just over the counter. New materials, all kinds of possibilities. Well, that's why we have to get off fossil providing. fuels. Because well, then there the you go into a detail, not the that's detail. That's not a detail. That's a detail. Fossil burning that's fuels is That's a detail because us. you can then attack the oil guys and no, all that. Well, excuse get me, off. Harold. No. There's less oxygen in the air than there has been since ever. I've not, I don't Down know. Down to 21%. It used to be 35% when the dinosaurs were around. It has to do with fossil burning fuels. So, well, okay, we that's, a, that's a detail. have renewables. It's that's a big a, detail. Well, that's a big detail. We, get we even had a disagreement because I think there's a good, uh, important place for uh, atomic energy and so forth. But anyway, that's a detail. The, uh, that On gets, the sun. No, that's, atomic a, energy. That's, that's a policy. Issue. That's sun. a detail. That's a big detail. The role of the intellectuals is to get the patterns, not the details. Information mm -hmm. over Load permits pattern. Every day, Tony comes a revolution in over the transom from yeah, every yeah, field, look at, giving us great more understanding. I look at all of human existence as a pattern, and I see that the burning of fossil fuels is destroying the environment. Well, we didn't burn much fossil oxygen. Most of our time, we were spent running away from the cats that ate us with alarming regularity. Well, I'm, talking on about the the, I'm talking plate. about the last well, hundred you're years. Well, I'm yeah, talking but, about. The carbon in the air, and I'm okay, talking that's about a, that's 350. Okay, that's a scientific, that's an issue. Okay, so, so then... Science has got a very important role in this. Okay, it's economics, okay? And what you've got, you sit it, uh, so you've got three de things, agriculture, industrial, and then this, and now you ain't got a job, they're outsourcing, it's outsourcing. If a banker's got a deal, you've now got containerization, you've got an internet, you've got Walmart, you've got supply chain, you've got an ability to invest anywhere. They're supposed to invest somewhere, and if they have to invest here, if they can invest over there and make 300% more, they're not serving their, their, their clients if they don't invest over because there. Because they're not support. patriotic. Whatever patriotic. They're, they're not world patriotic. citizens. It's a they're world. They're not world citizens. It's they're a, it's they will global. take the money wherever they can get it and it, rip off any country they can rip off okay, they by just any means off necessary. Libya, exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay, well, among others, but that's a pattern of realpolitik. But it's, they can't it's mess with Russia and China. Well, okay. And, and that's if they a, dare, we're gonna, there will be only cockroaches running around. But it finally comes around. It finally. Let's, we want to avoid that. Of course. Because it's very worrying. It's the most crucial time and most crucial generation. We ought to get that in our mind, the crucialness of what the time we happen to be born into. We could have been born 200 years Well, the years entire ago. American dream has been shattered because the American dream was based on progress. Well, yes. And okay. there is no more progress, well, I would progress submit, here, I would except on Wall Street there is developing new social models. We got, uh, evolution got I mean, started. I'm not on Wall Street, on Occupy Wall Street. Well, I, I'm, I'm with you entirely on that obviously we're all in but I mean life began about 3.8 billion years ago they got to know how that started evolution is gone I'm looking at it that way mm -hmm. and the universe where is it the second law hold I think it does do we have parallel universes we got a telescope array that takes a picture of the Big Bang 13.8 billion yeah, years ago Howard, within a nanosecond the universe is seven or eight dimensions that's what string theory th tells us yeah, but we live in a three dimensional world okay. we'll never be able to well, comprehend it our brain well, will never it, be able to it does have that. relevance whether or not the second law holds or not. Are we a closed system or open? But don't go in, we don't have to go into all no, that. We, we come to. down to the political, it comes down to the political, is mentally informed. And one thing is the idea, you've got two things in an economic order. You have the ability, supply. Let's suppose we've got supply capability, which is growing exponentially in order to produce goods and services and even uh, knowledge and so forth right. that is growing exponentially. And then, and then you have on the other side uh, uh, demand. You have the people of the society have to have the ability to buy what can be produced. Couldn't agree more. That's one of the elements. And you know what I would have done? I wouldn't have bailed out the banks. I would have canceled a trillion dollars of students' loans to create demand for consumer That's goods. one of the things that's on the table, kind of, in the resonating thing here. Now, they might be, but they did what they thought. Because when I went to college in the 60s, not only was I paid to go to Columbia, I, know. I got a fellowship, mm. and I took out a national defense education That's because you're deservingly three, bright, and so no, therefore you're one of the... Was bright, but you're one of, bright. You're, one of the, you're one of the good ones that we'll try to support so we can copy but you into becoming of going to Canada, member of the country club and the Rotary right, and all right, the rest right. of well, your I've seen all that. I've seen all that. I know. I 
went to school. Anyway, with these the people. point is at the level of that was Mr. Keynes. Mr. Keynes wanted to do that. Keynes has set up more or less the order. He had some competition, what, from Schumpeter and from Van, and then it get down. No, but to, he despaired. He wanted to make an international currency called the Bancor, not the dollar. Detail. That's Mr. a big P detail. No, but the the international order, and he wrote a letter. I want to just point it out because you you just brushed over it, no, and you, you seem to brush over things that I think are crucial. Okay, and that's what happens in intellectual discourse. But you said that it's not only outsourcing that's there, but you can understand, or even the derivatives and stuff, it's all in the private sector. It should be within the government. That's another big issue well, in terms of issue. national structure. That's right. But there is risk in the economic order, and the <coughs> bankers have an obligation to get the best return they can and so forth, and they need a derivatives clause. Without all any liability. You have to have a pattern that is so comprehensively no, appropriate to the liberation of the society as a whole, and also within an ecological kind available to us now. Available right, right. to us, okay, with science. If we don't have known nothing, anti-intellectual biases running through the body politic of the world and so forth, we have that capability. But it has to be something that's so comprehensively appropriate in an evolutionary sense to get a tensional integrity that goes through the whole of it to mm -hmm. inform the whole of it in an evolutionary sense that might bring us into a pattern where we have to think in terms of we are we are transcending 200,000 years of human history. We're coming into a new punctuated equilibrium. Paradigm is too small. It's everything. It's a new order. And it has to involve those responsible for the historically inherited institutions that we want to take shots at is who was it that made the problems that we have. And that's not appropriate. What you have to do is understand we've all been ignorant. But in the the whole of human history, Harold, been you have ignorant. to meet the needs of the people. Yes, of and course. And I went down there and I interviewed a fellow by the name of Jetter, yeah. Jonathan Jetter, yeah. when I went down last Friday morning. And I asked him, you know, why he's there. And he says, I'm here for my friends who are in debt and jobs and my parents who are afraid to retire. Right. And that says it all. And that's the I situation. I didn't say it all in terms of why. Why? It's because that's the one percent is manipulating our lives through the politics. Citizens United was as bad a decision, well, maybe not as bad, as Dred Scott was, well, where the yeah. Dred Scott mm -hmm. decision mm -hmm. yeah. said that even freed slaves were not citizens. History is a nightmare. We had chattel no, slavery. It's not a, not a, it yes, is. No, it's By not, history is not a nightmare. We well, have to I think Jamie history. Joyce was, Jimmy Joyce was right. Well, it's all be, always been unjust. A few people running everything. And it needn't be because that's no, your has second been. point that we mm. have the potential. Newly. We haven't had it since about the year 1970 about what I'm talking about in a well, system. No, um, no we that's have what, the technology. That's the point. Potential. This is not just a moment in history. It's a matter like, of distribution. No, it's, it's a all, matter of redistribution. Okay, of the you assets. want to keep dragging it back into well, it's the a normal. Matter, why are the people down on Wall Street? Because they're sensing that. I'm all. We're in. They total can't get there. They've spent all this money on getting an education, and they, there's no jobs. So what are we going to come no, up? We the, have to redistribute why, the wealth. Okay, the, the, okay, that's so simplistic. I, it's not like, simplistic. Oh, it seems simplistic. It's may, yeah. Maybe to you, because yeah. you and I, maybe not. But the people down there, the people who don't have anything, the people who are suffering to pay their goddamn medical bills. I know, it's horrible. Because of the pharmaceuticals Couldn't and agree. the insurance companies. And the parasitic health, health industry. Predators. Yeah. Exactly. It's okay. a disgrace. I, and it also discourages jobs from coming okay. here. Toyota would rather go to Canada. The where thing they that can, Mr. Where Keynes, they can get the government to the pay thing for the that, health care. The thing is, I'm trying to... Yeah, I understand that. Here. I'm in complete accord. I love the people that's going on. I hope it just goes like mushrooms everywhere. Well, it's and mushrooming they, they everywhere. It's one it makes month in 950 cities. Then I hope it creates a context where something can emerge. I think we're looking for something to emerge. I'm trying to get at what's trying to emerge. That's the trouble. A new sense of community, which the well, 60s okay. was also about. Okay, we might be do well to anchor back to that, if I may, because there was a lot of stuff going on then. But anyway, Keynes, back to economy. Mm -hmm. It's the economics that informs the political. And he said in a letter to his grandchildren, the unemployment, that's the only way that the folks of the world can get money to buy food is to have a job role on the estate of the master who owns all the capital assets. It's like a plantation mentality. Well, this was a plantation capitalism. That's what we have here. Yeah, but it's uh, so... He said in a letter Walmart to Walmart is the update for the, the birds. The point is that he said, uh, it's worth thinking about how are we going to form capital? 
How are we going to distribute demand? Those are two major questions that are involved in terms of the economic thinking. You had different people. But you had Keynes. In a letter to his grandchildren, he said, in 1930, you're going to be confronted with something you cannot understand that is tech massive, worldwide, technologically induced unemployment. The only way we distribute demand or money or buying power and they have to have buying power and money in order to clear the market if you have some productive capability. The potential can't be realized because they don't have the money to buy the house. They don't have the money to buy the bread. You know. That's why it cancels so student that's loans. Thing. That's what the so first thing I would have done. And he said, okay, there's a, okay that could be. That's but only said, a trillion dollars. But it's structural. It's not the bad guys doing that. It's structural. No, it's decisions are made by Summer, by Clinton, who called Rubin and insulting this man here, the best secretary of the treasury since Alexander Hamilton. Clinton will say anything. He could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge twice. Well, that's the politicians are good at that sort of thing. They have to get elected after a year. Everybody takes And he was the beneficiary of the collapse of the Soviet but Union the point, and the dot-com revolution. The point being, the pattern. It's an accident of history. We have to have something, if only seeing it politically like that, we have to have something that is going to be able to, I, the part you maybe missed over about how we're going to get justice for all the people in the ecology and everything, but we have to have something that's going to be so comprehensive, it's like a geodesic, it's like a thing that goes through the hole and informs, it's, it's tensional integrity in terms of tensegrity, uh, you've got compression, tensional integrity, it'll go through and inform the hole and it has to be a pattern that can be understood by and gone along with maybe haltingly but gone along with by those responsible for the outdated institutional structure. We don't provide that from the progressive community. We have to provide one that includes everybody, and that's the major challenge, and it has to be something that's going to get uh, ownership of capital. You don't do away with the private yes, but sector. but the decision makers have to be made accountable for the decisions that they made. Well, the ultimate and it was a stupid move to cancel Glass-Steagall. I couldn't agree uh, with you more. And, I you know, and Volcker says, we have a lot of problems connected to this. The greatest problem, the three problems connected to this crisis, We're which is the greatest since the 19th century. Yeah. The first is we have a military that's larger than the rest of the world put together. Right. Yeah. We well, can't continue that. You can't sustain that economically. Yeah. Secondly, the inequality is the greatest in the industrial world. Yeah. And the third thing, we have to go into renewables and away from fossil. Okay, that, those are things that are all should fuels. be on the table and everything, but also on the table should be something, how are we going to form capital? And how, are we, we're, we're not going to do, Naomi Klein writes well, shock third we want a mixed economy. We don't want to do away with the private sector. We don't want to, the public sector has responsibility for setting the order. They have to do that. The risk has to be put over into the federal system for which taking the swaps and derivatives, right. and there has to be a reinsuring against right law. Now, we have to set the up the public a sector is being downsized, and the private sector is exporting jobs. Right, right. So we have to take control well, of the well, private sector. Well, yeah, but then we have to present something that they will be able to understand haltingly, and then go. I up. speak and for the ninety-nine percent. Okay. I don't give a damn about the one percent. I think we ought to. The one percent, I don't give a damn. I about I think them. we ought to care about them, not for any. Uh, 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 you know, parochial reason, but at all because we're all part of this. We're all part of it, and so forth. But they don't what, consider themselves you, part of it. They what, consider themselves above yeah, it all. But, they yeah. consider everyone else strangers or hoi polloi or not sufficiently pedigreed. Well, That's their mentality. Yeah, but we have to their we, perspective. We have to do that. And what it is is we have to have, and it'll be the private sector. And one of the things we have to, in a certain sense, in the confrontational sense, we have to hoist the whole system on its own petard, the petard being private property, private ownership. We should not just try to do away with that or tax it or something. We should spread <laughs> Ownership. Listen, to the Huey Long said the that in '35. He no, said, "Share the wealth." Share Russell capital. Long, share Russell capitalism. Long, Russell Long, Russell Long capitalism. cried. He got the ESOPs going, but we got a pattern we could build on. We should have capital formed in a way where the ownership of the technology is distributed democratically as a means of getting demand. Well, that's what computerization has done. Okay, well that's something. Some, that's yeah, important. well that's the thing that we could that's agree on. That's wasting the system by its petard. Well, the way we want it's being to do used that. by the occupation of everything. Thank God people. for the people downtown. Thank God for Tony Re hey, Re Re Harold. Re restoring <laughs> I extraordinaire. These, I love Last these Western things. Empire. Thanks for viewing. Uh, thanks, Tony, for writing a good book. All your good work. And I, <laughs> we should just all go to